So it's actually the results of infectious uh, virus that came in and destroyed the cells. You can't see the virus that causes COVID-19, but the damage it can do is striking. These discs are monkey cells stained blue, the clear patches where they've been destroyed by coronavirus taken from patients in the NHS. When COVID-19 emerged, scientists here at the UK's largest virus research institute were asked to stop what they were doing. We work only with volunteers in terms of now for coronavirus and, uh, and we have basically everybody volunteering to, to, do this, uh, to do this work. When there's a new case of coronavirus in Scotland, a sample is brought here to the centre's high containment category 3 lab. We're the first to be allowed to film inside. This is one of the few labs in the country that's licensed to handle pathogens as dangerous as coronavirus. But here, they're not so much interested in whether someone's tested positive or not, but what the genetic fingerprint of their individual virus can tell them about how the outbreak is evolving. It's the only place where they can handle the live virus, but once its genetic material has been extracted, it's safe, and the sample can head outside to be decoded. And it's this sequence that could be key to getting on top of the outbreak, because the genetic fingerprint of each virus reveals its closest relative, and therefore the people it previously infected. We're now in a position where we can actually sequence cases of the coronavirus as they emerge, and we can compare them very rapidly with sequences from uh, people from other countries, other parts of the world, and compare them. Researchers around the world are sharing all the virus's genetic codes to construct a global family tree of the outbreak. And now the Glasgow team and 12 others across the UK have just received government money to work together to use the genetics of the virus to see how it's mutating, whether it develops resistance to drugs, but most importantly, how it's spreading. One thing that we can do is if we have cases of coronavirus in a ward and then perhaps, for example, we might find that a healthcare worker gets infected, the most likely reason for that would actually be com community transmission. Um, but obviously we really need to know that, um, that that is not coming from within the hospital ward and that we are not uh, causing problems for our patients. The science is moving fast, but the pandemic is moving faster. The breakthroughs can't come quick enough. Tom Clark, News at 10.